Hey, this is section 7.5, Special Types of Linear Systems. When we finish, I want you to be able to identify the three types of linear systems by the solution, by looking at the graph, or algebraically with the equations. Okay, so we have three possibilities when we're talking about a linear system. Because it's linear, my two lines could intersect. If I have intersecting lines, that means I have one solution, and that solution is going to be a point, my x value and my y value. Now if I have parallel lines, that means that there is no solution. Because remember when we solve a linear system, we're looking for the area that those two lines have in common. If the lines are parallel, they'd have nothing in, in common or I could have the same lines. Now if I have the same line, that means that any point on one line is automatically on the other. So this one's kind of special and it means I have infinitely many solutions. Okay, so now we're going to look at how we can determine how many solutions using an equation. Now if I'm looking at my equation, and maybe a little easier if you already have it set up in slope intercept form, notice on this first one I have a slope of 5 in the first equation, I have a slope of 5 in the second equation, and then my y-intercept is 3 and negative 1 in the second equation. So I have the same slope with a different y-intercept. That tells me that I have parallel lines. So if I have parallel lines, what does that mean? I have no solution because the lines are parallel. There's no place that they intersect. Let's look at the second one same slope, same slope, same y-intercept for both. Everything's the same. So I know that I have the same lines, so I have infinitely many solutions. Let's look at the next one. I have a slope of negative 2 and a slope of 4. My slopes are different, so I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to have one solution. It's going to be an ordered pair with my x and y value. I don't know that the numbers are going to be whole numbers or decimals or, or what, but I do know that there is only one solution. Okay, now once again, I can also tell by looking at the graph, if I have the equations and I want to graph it, I have a y-intercept of 3, 1, 2, 3, a slope of 5 up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1, connect using my straight edge, oops, I didn't connect that very well. My other line, I have a uh, y-intercept of negative 1, positive 5 again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1. Now these lines, and sometimes it's hard to tell with parallel lines, these lines are parallel, and part of how I have to know that is by noticing the slope. Now the next one, I have a y-intercept of 2, a slope of 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1, connect my line, and I notice when I'm graphing this one, oh, I have a y-intercept of 2, a slope of 3, it's the same line right on top of each other for this one. So this one I know I have the same lines. and infinitely many solutions. 
Now this next one, once again when I look at it, say I didn't notice that the slopes were different. I could graph and I could see. So I had a y-intercept of 3, 1, 2, 3, down 2 over 1. And the next one, y-intercept of negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And a slope of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, rise 4 over 1. And I'm going to connect. And then I see that these points, these two lines do intersect. So I know that this line has one solution. So the first one was no solutions because it was parallel lines. Second one, infinitely many solutions because they were the same lines. The third one I had intersecting lines and one solution. Okay, now we can also determine algebraically. Sometimes your solutions are going to look a little funny. So now this one, I'm going to solve this one using elimination. So I'm going to multiply my bottom equation by negative 1. So I'm just going to bring my top one over. So I have 5x plus y is equal to negative 3. My second one, I'm going to distribute. So I have negative 5x minus y is equal to positive 1. Well, positive 5x minus 5x, that adds up to 0. Uh-oh, positive y minus y, that adds up to 0. So on this side, I've just got nothing. It's equal to negative 3 combined with a positive 1 gives me a negative 2. Now, this is something we've done before. When I get something that looks like this that makes absolutely no sense, it says 0 is equal to negative 2, I have no solution. It makes no sense because these are parallel lines. Okay, let's look at another one. This time I have 3x plus y is equal to negative 2 and 6x plus 2y is equal to negative 4. I think I want to solve using elimination again. I'm going to multiply the top by a negative 2, cancel out the y's. So when I do that, I have negative 6x minus 2y is equal to positive 4. Now the second one I'm just going to bring over. So I have 6x plus 2y is equal to negative 4. Okay, now this thing's looking funny again. Negative 6x plus 6x adds up to 0. Negative 2y plus 2y adds up to 0. So I've got a 0 on this side. Drop down my equal sign. Oh, 4 minus 4 gives me 0. 0 is equal to 0. Or I get a true statement. But no variable get a number equal to a number and it's true. This one tells me I have the same lines. I have the same lines any number I choose as a solution. That's why this one has infinitely many solutions. Okay, let's take a look at one more. Okay, I think that I want to get rid of the y's on this one. So I'm going to multiply my bottom equation by a negative 1. So I'm going to bring my top one over. So I have 2x plus y is equal to 7. Negative 1 times negative 4x gives me a positive 4x. Negative 1 times y is minus y. That's equal to a positive 5. 
2x combined with 4x gives me 6x, y's add up to 0, 7 plus 5 gives me 12, I'm going to divide both sides by 6, so x is equal to 2. Now I need to find y. I have x equals a number. I know that I have intersecting lines. and that I have one solution. Now my y value, to find that, just like we did earlier, 2x plus y is equal to 7, x is 2, so 2 times 2 plus y is equal to 7, 2 times 2 is 4, so I'm just going to subtract 4 from both sides, and y is equal to 3. So my solution would be the point 2, 3. But what we were really interested in was finding out that they were intersecting lines and that there was only one solution. Okay, so when I solve algebraically, I could have something that looks like 0 is equal to negative 2, which is obviously a false statement. When I get an obviously false statement, that tells me that I have parallel lines. And if I have parallel lines, there is no solution. I could get an obviously true statement, like 0 is equal to 0, 2 is equal to 2, 5 is equal to 5. That tells me that I have the same lines and that I have infinitely many solutions. The last possibility, I could end up with x equals a number or y equals a number. That tells me that I have intersecting lines and I have one solution. 